Today I'm gonna teach you how to create this dope spinning ceiling effect in After Effects. Let's go. My name is Devin Wynn and welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned, today I'm going to teach you how you can create this dope spinning ceiling effect using the Metro Boomin' Future Music video from the new We Don't Trust You album. This effect was made by Omar Jones and HiG World. Shout out to them, really dope directors. But it's just a really simple and timeless effect and it's also super easy to create in After Effects. As I mentioned today, all we'll be using is After Effects, no plugins at all required. But really quick shout out to our Shake It Up preset pack in Premiere Pro. Later in the video, we are going to be using some of our presets from our Camera Shake preset pack. I think it's just a really dope way to just spice up this effect and it's also just super easy to use just drag and drop so we are going to be using that later so if you want to check that out you can get it at 11percent.net link in the description without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial all right guys so now that we're inside of after effects the first thing we're going to do we have a clip from the young metro music video loaded up right here the first thing that we actually need is a blank shot of the background ceiling and luckily for us there actually is a frame in the music video where they have a nice blank shot of the ceiling so just as a heads up if you're shooting a music video and you want to create an effect similar to one like this just make sure that you get an entire blank shot of the circle background that you're trying to spin around behind the subject make sure it's all completely blank because we don't want to have any like duplicates of your subject spinning around in the circle in the background with it it'll make a lot more sense when we get more into the tutorial so once you have that screenshot i'm going to go ahead and hop inside of photoshop right now because i'm going to be using the new generative ai tool that photoshop has now you don't have to have adobe photoshop to, to use this tool you can use generative ai uh, with a bunch of free websites runwayml.com is another great example of a free ai image generation software you can do image to image text to image and basically just extend the image because the main reason i'm going in photoshop right here is i'm going to be grabbing the selection tool selecting these blank areas and then clicking the generative fill and asking ai to extend this image and we're gonna go ahead and wait for it the main reason why is because we need a full circle in order for the thing to uh, the background to spin around so you might have to go through a couple results but it looks like the second one right here is a pretty good example and if we want to save time we can just go ahead and duplicate that and then just flip it upside down and boom there we go now we have a pretty decent replaced background blank background uh, that we can use behind our subjects now we're going to go back inside of after effects and we're going to go ahead and drag the ceiling image that we generated in adobe photoshop behind the layer and then i'm going to right click it and then transform it and then fit it to the comp width so that it's just in the right spot and now let's go ahead and add some animation we're going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of this top layer right here and then I'm going to go to my effects and presets and search for a transform effect and drag that onto my blank image right here. Now we're going to create a keyframe at the rotation, obviously at the very beginning. And then we're going to go a couple frames after maybe about like two, three seconds. And I'm just going to increase that rotation to about two spins. I'm just gonna have the uh, thing spin twice and boom, there you go. One key thing to note on is the more centered your anchor point is on the, the exact center of the circle, the less uh, like warp spinning you'll have. But honestly, this is pretty fine. Now let's go ahead and animate this a little bit. So I'm gonna hit the drop down on the effects and then the drop down on transform. And now I'm gonna select these and then I'm going to click on the graph editor. I'm going to scroll up to this first linear point and I'm gonna turn this into a nice uh, beveled point and I'm just going to adjust this anchor dragging arrow thing so I can make the spinning rotation just a little bit more smoother. I'm going to do the same thing for the first point as well. Let's go ahead and make that bezier and then I'm just going to drag these anchor point controls inward. So now that when we play it out we have a nice smoothed out animation. It might be too fast so you just might have to go ahead and adjust but after messing around with it for a little bit we have a nice smooth spinning animation effect now of course it's time to go ahead and turn off the shutter speed composition and let's go ahead and crank up that shutter speed just a tad bit maybe about 60 degrees so we have some nice motion blur with that i think that really ties together the whole effect and makes it feel a lot more real i'm going to exit out of this graph editor mode uh, maybe i'll adjust these uh, keyframes just a little bit farther apart so we have some better spinning and honestly, that looks pretty good if you ask me. Now, one key thing to note on is you will see on the edges right here, we do have some black edges because we didn't expand the image as large as we should have. Now, you of course can do that on Adobe Photoshop. We select everything, scale it down, and then just ask AI to fill in the rest of the edges. But to save yourself some time, what you can do is you can actually just add some artificial camera zoom ins on After Effects and they'll just zoom in. Uh, so that we won't see any of those black edges. So we'll do that in just a bit, but first let's go ahead and rotoscope 
build out our subject. So I'm going to turn on back the first layer of the music video and let's go ahead and double click it. And now we're going to get into some rotoscoping. So for those of you who don't know how to rotoscope, we have this rotoscope video right here, which you can check out on our channel, but I will be going over a brief explanation of how to do so. Grab your roto brush tool right here in the top left hand corner. And of course, make sure you're selected, double selected on your, your frame so that you get brought into this second layer composition right here. Now, if you have a yellow error bar right here and it says, oh, you can't rotoscope, whatever frame rate mismatch, simply go to composition, hit composition settings and change your frame rate exactly to what the yellow frame rate error message is right here. And then that should get rid of the error. That's a common issue that a lot of people will come across. And honestly, I didn't know how to solve it when I first got into After Effects. So I always let people know about that. And then of course, as you can see, I'm just basically coloring over my subjects. If it selects any areas that you don't like, then you can just hold option to delete it like that. And once you've selected the first frame of your rotoscope subjects, we're just going to go ahead and drag the playhead along uh, so that it continues and just watch your rotoscope. Make sure it doesn't do anything weird or messes up your selection. I'm just making sure it uh, selects everything I want it to select. And honestly, it's doing a pretty good job if you ask me. And boom, once it finishes on the last frame, make sure you hit the freeze icon and it will just basically lock in all your rotoscope frames just in case if a crash happens, let's say you lose something, which by the way, I'm gonna hit command S, oops. Which by the way, I'm gonna hit command S to save this just in case if a crash happens, you always wanna be prepared. Always remember to save your projects, guys. Once we have our frozen rotoscope subjects, let's go ahead and go back to our original composition and you'll see that our subjects are rotoscoped out and you can see that spinning ceiling animation behind them and it starts to look like the real music video. It looks pretty cool if you ask me. Now let's just go ahead. Uh, this clip is actually a little bit too short. So what I'm gonna do to, uh, to hack this is I'm gonna hit command D to duplicate it and then I'm going to right click it. I'm going to click on time and then I'm just going to time reverse the layer and then uh, basically drag it to the end. So then that way it just repeats so that we have a longer clip because the clip was really short. I'm not going to lie. Lastly, to just clean this thing up and get rid of those black edges around the corners is we're going to hit layer, create a new adjustment layer. And then I'm going to add a transform effect to the adjustment layer. Also make sure that this adjustment layer is on the very top layer. So I just drag this to the very, very top. And what I'm going to do is right before the spinning starts, I'm just going to hit a keyframe on the scale. And then I'm going to go a couple frames in to where the spinning is at a, a like a pretty good rate and I'm going to zoom in quite a bit so that we basically just zoom in so that we don't see any of the black edges and there you go we have a nice little camera zoom in I think it honestly adds to the effect makes it look a little bit cooler and it also hides the little mess ups and errors of this effect really quick side note if you want to add some extra camera shakes we actually do have this preset pack at our store 11percent.net a bunch of crazy camera shakes that I honestly think would work perfect with this effect here's just an example of dragging and dropping some camera shakes onto your project you can use it in premiere pro it's really easy to use and it honestly saves me so much time i personally think it would look great in this project and here's an example of this clip with an artificial camera shake from our store so if you're interested in getting our ultimate camera shake it up pack you can check it out at 11percent.net and with that here's the final result if you guys made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you managed to find any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free. All this content is free. So really, it means the world to me. And once again, if you're interested in copying that camera shake it up preset pack or any of our other preset packs, we have cinematic title card packs, 3D chrome overlay packs, CRT glitch effects, paint stop motion effects, just a bunch of crazy stuff. You can get them all at 11percent.net. All these preset packs are super easy to use, just drag and drop basically, and they create some dope effects saving you so much time. So if you're interested, you can check it out at 11percent.net. And also if you're interested in earning some extra passive income as a video editor, without having to deal with any more annoying clients, then you can definitely check out signing up to become a preset pack seller at 11percent.net. Out of all creative marketplaces, we give creatives the largest percentage commission of their sales, only keeping 11%, hence the name. So you get 89% of your profits. That's incredible. So if you're interested, you can check out the sign up earn link in the description. Once again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below what tutorial you want to see from us next. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.